So in order to both address this and create a linkage between the digital compact, the digital agenda, which been, is being advanced by the uh, uh, United Nations and will be just for your information, it'll be adopted in, in uh, uh, September 2024 as indeed a global charter. And our objective in that is of course, use the many benefits of uh, digital technologies to advance science, but very specifically in this case, to ensure that the future compact, the future charter, the future treaty on digital technologies will very much recognize science. And to that end, we are developing a, a chapter and, and very much gratitude to, to uh, Anna uh, for her inputs and, and for circulating this. I mean, we will have a, 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 we will make a first submission by the 30th of April this year, but it is a first submission. We then have until the 30, uh, rather the 15th of December to finalize that. But I think we're going to use that as an ongoing exercise to, as I said, advance the contribution of science to the SDGs through the digital uh, agenda. And of course, much of the digital agenda, digital technologies come from scientific research and, and collaborations, and that needs to be better understood. It needs to be better highlighted. And that's broadly, again, just reinforcing the message I shared at the beginning of my intervention is why the United Nations needs to recognize this process. And it's our aim with, with all our, 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 our collaborators to go forth in September and uh, make that a, a reality. Anna, I will hand back to you. Thank you very much for the, for the, for the time and, and sorry that the screen wasn't working. Sure. Declan, do you want to make any comments on this last slide, which is really about how this is preparing us for the UN Summit of the Future? It, 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 exactly. And as, as I referred, so we, we really want to come out of the summit this year with very clear recommendations for science for the summit of the future. And I think that's a very, very, I, I think it's a very, very important process. Of course, it's a very complex process. I think it touches on, and again, not to use all your time this afternoon, I think it touches on global policymaking, global regulation, global approaches, and then using the platform of the UN. But of course, the UN is, is, has its own challenges, and some of those challenges focus around the area of implementation, doing stuff. And I think the doing stuff is hugely important. And for me, the doing stuff in this context means standing up and advancing collaborative research and development. That needs an enabling environment of policy, of regulation. It needs funding. It needs, of course, the researchers to do their stuff. And it needs a number of things to happen together. So we want to paint that picture. We want to show to the highest level policymaking groups in this world at the UN level and through the UN, through its member states and work to build much more cohesion, much more alignment, and then very specific targeted measures that we will put forward uh, 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 next year. And they're going to be translated. I mean, we will have whatever you want to call them, priorities or, or case studies. There won't be everything, but it allows us to have a bit of a focus while advancing the broader campaign objectives of having a very strong movement towards enabling collaborative research, again, with particular reference to in my view, you know, removing the taking, trying to take the geography out of out of science collaboration. By that, I mean less uh, formal delineation between developed and less developed, and more cooperation and collaboration between common challenges that are affecting everybody, everywhere, all the time. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Jacqueline. A fantastic way to set the stage and inspire everyone here to participate this year and in the future years. I want to pass the floor to Eric, Eric Ruth, who has been really leading a lot of the coordination to create last year for the first time a whole series of events related to science and policy from Latin America and the Caribbean. Eric? I'm sorry, uh, do you prefer English or Spanish? Whichever you prefer, Eric, there is interpretation available. Okay. Uh, entonces, eh, gracias por... Uh, well, then, thank you for these introductory words, Ana. It's true, and it's also true that we get a lot of help from the IAI. 
So the, the success is shared. We can be happy, both of us can be happy to say that as organizations uh, that Latin America has achieved or has managed to be present in this major event. Se destacó esta, digamos, esta presencia es que how eh, was this presence seen? Because um, of the 300 sessions, Latin America participated in 70 of them. So that amounts to almost 25%. That's a quarter of the event of the Science Summit, which included Latin American participation. So this really pleases me because Latin America has a huge potential regarding science. We need to make the most of it and we need to value this potential as well. I would say that, I don't want to say neglected, but that's that might apply regarding our potential. In the most recent event, 7,500 people participated, and there were around 1,600 speakers. So this is a, a huge event, uh, considering its size. Of the 70 sessions, the uh, Inter-American Institute for Global Change Research organized 20 sessions. And that's quite a, a, a big percentage as well. The other events were organized by uh, several institutions or, or independent researchers. We had people from Mexico, the Caribbean, Argentina, Chile, and the south of the continent. So the entire continent was represented. Uh, I think that Argentina had a, a higher degree of participation uh, because maybe it's easier for them to, to get to me because as you can hear me speak, I'm Argentinian. It's easier for me to contact um, people from Argentina and network with uh, people from Argentina than with people from other countries. I would like to especially thank the IAI as they have helped me with uh, by providing me with many connections. Some examples of sessions convened by the IAI, advancing interspecific dialogue for the participation of indigenous peoples, youth, and women in the context of the climate crisis, building science, advisory, and diplomacy capacity to address the SDGs, perspectives from emerging leaders in the global south. Children and youth at the intersection of education, climate change, and public health. So these are not just, these are not strictly uh, hard science or scientific sessions because they also include uh, sociology, anthropology, software science, and some society related issues. So you don't need to restrict yourselves. You, you shouldn't think that this is only, only hard science. It also describes the problems of um, peoples. I know that Anna is very much interested in indigenous peoples, for instance. So we very much encourage uh, the participation of indigenous peoples issues. And not just that, also the issue of vulnerable populations. Last year, we had several presentations in the area of health. Also, um, 
vulnerable uh, we we had topics in the area of uh, disadvantaged uh, disadvantaged and vulnerable people next slide please okay ways to participate participation is open to the public and it's also free of charge and this is a huge advantage so don't uh, be shy and invite people because nobody has to pay what you need to do is register uh, but that's the other side of things of course uh, sometimes some people uh, over register let's say and they realize they cannot attend every session at the same time and that maybe uh, raises people's expectations because when you see that there are 1,000 or 1,200 participants registered and uh, registered and only one tenth of that show up, that might be uh, uh, discouraging. And that might be solved if we manage communication effectively. For instance, some groups have a very efficient communication management and the but they have achieved a 70 percent participation of the people registered so it is possible it can be done maybe this is something to consider but this actually might be a challenge we shouldn't just you know disseminate this among the groups we know we should try and post this information in in groups we are not so familiar with to do this we can use uh, the service that Declan has mentioned so this is a company called alpha galileo they prepare press releases in english and spanish and last year they were underused so please make the most of alpha galileo efficiently and you know um, be very specific in this regard if you have questions after this meeting please remember that meetings are held every two weeks I organize the meetings and you don't need to attend every meeting because some uh, topics uh, appear once and again, but they are held uh, frequently so that everyone can participate. Sessions can last one, two or three hours in your language of choice by submitting information about the session and the speakers no later than the 12th of June. 12th of June is the is today's deadline. Maybe um, it will be changed, but we don't know yet. You can uh, make your presentation in English or in Spanish or Portuguese. the we use zoom and you can add simultaneous interpret interpretation however automated translation on the screen doesn't work well and we haven't find a, a good solution we're trying to look into it but we haven't found a solid proposal yet. Sessions can be fully virtual, which is an economical solution, or they can be hybrid. Um, we can have an, an in-person group and also a virtual transmission, and this can be done in New York. 
to go to New York, and we need to be very clear about this, otherwise we are creating unnecessary expectations. To go to New York, you need to find the means to afford the trip. The SSUNGA does not cover travel expenses, does not cover accommodation. We might help you find a meeting room, but we suggest that the organizer or convener organizes their own room. If there is an issue with meeting rooms, then yes, please talk to us and we can help. But we suggest that you uh, get in touch with uh, each country mission in the UN or at embassies, consulates. There are other places such as chambers of commerce, or for instance, there's the Scandinavian Culture Center. They have large meeting rooms there as well, and they're available. So there are indeed different solutions. And at the end of the slide, you can see the link to submit your session proposal. If you have an idea, but you have no speakers, that can also, that uh, we can help you with because we can suggest speakers. We also encourage you to hold international sessions and not just within the continent, but also if you have the necessary connections, you can hold intercontinental sessions because problems are the same. A slide or no? Let's see if there's one more slide. Yes, I think the next one is uh, for Matias. Thank you so much, Eric, for your leadership in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Eric and Declan. Good afternoon, everyone. And as Eric was saying, the IAI has played a major role in last year's edition. And this will be the case this year as well. The IAI will be co-presiding uh, the uh, this year's Science Summit. As we did last year, the IAI will contribute to disseminate and communicate the sessions, especially those related to the IAI and that have the participation of people and organizations that are part of the IAI's community. And we might also uh, provide with uh, provide some help. We might consider requests to cover language interpretation costs through in the sessions, as Eric was saying. Speakers can choose the language they feel most comfortable with. And the IAI might organize simultaneous interpretation so that the session uh, is accessible for people that speak different languages. As part of the IAI, we are conducting a regional priority assessment regarding science and policy. As a result of this assessment, we have identified priority issues in the region. We would like to encourage the science and policy community of the Americas to organize and propose sessions for this science summit that focus on, this, on the following topics. We have identified uh, uh, these thematic priorities. Esperamos un momento para ver si la conexión de Matías vuelva, porque sé que él me dijo que tenía problemas con su conexión de internet. Esperamos un momentito. 
Bueno, Matías nos estaba comentando sobre estas temáticas que han surgido a través de... Matías nos está diciendo sobre las temáticas que se up en nuestro regional assessment. Ahí está Matías. Ahí está Matías también. Matías, perdón, estaba explicando el whole regional assessment. So, topic number one, transboundary environmental governance. Two, climate adaptation actions for resilience. Three, migrations, mobility, and the social ecological drivers. Matías, no te estamos escuchando. Sí, a ver, ahora me escuchan. Okay, you hear me now? Yes, now we can. So, um, solutions in climate, environment, and health. I was saying that at the IEA, we have identified certain priorities for the region, and we encourage uh, the science policy community to uh, present sessions on the following topics, as you see on the screen, transboundary environmental governance, climate adaptation actions for resilience, migrations, mobility, and their social ecological drivers, solutions in climate, environment, and health, environmental impacts of trade, of international trade, and innovations on energy, water, and agriculture. These are just a few of the priority topics that we identified in the regional assessment. Of course, these are not the only topics. But it is true that these are topics that, that we identified as priorities. So it's important for them to appear in the uh, agenda. Next slide, Anna, please. Finally, these are our emails. Please contact us if you need any kind of help or more information. We will be available to advise uh, you and help you if you want to participate in the Science Summit. On the right, you can find the QR code and the link to access the platform from which you can send your abstracts and submit your sessions. Uh, so let's see. Now we have a, a few minutes to uh, take your questions. Jessica, por favor, adelante. Hola, Jessica, please go ahead. Hello, thank you so much. I would like to ask something about the participation, uh, the participation in this session. Maybe you can tell me if the in-person participation would only be in the sessions, in which sessions? What happens with the in-person participation? Is it, is it just for our sessions or for other sessions? A ver si quieren que, que responda. Maybe I can answer that. Yes, please go ahead. If I understood the question correctly, you can participate, of course, in your session, but you can also participate in every other session uh, you want to participate in. Uh, if you want to organize an in-person session, then there is New York. You can go to New York where you will get some help. If you want to hold an in-person meeting Guatemala, in, este caso, in Guatemala, in this case, for instance, that's possible as well. However, you need specific IT infrastructure. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, maybe I can help Jessica. There is a Guatemalan government de delegation that wants to go to New York and participate in the Science Summit in New York. So can you tell us about how this would work? 
if they can go and attend in person. Can you explain, Declan, which would be the benefits of going there, which type of meetings they can participate in, um, those that go to New York? Yes, exactly. We want to know how it would work. And also, if we were to participate in person, the we would be traveling just for our session, or can we attend other sessions in person? Thank you. Declan? Declan? Yes. <laughs> so, again, the question is, what, what would be the benefits and what can people per expect if they're able to participate in person, such as the de this delegation from the Guatemalan government? What, what can be done? What kinds of side events, meetings can be participating in for those who are able and interested to travel in person? Um, first of all, uh, we would work with them to ensure that in addition to their own session, they're, they're included in as many other sessions as possible, for example, as speakers and also participants. Then, of, of course, they won't be going to the summit for three weeks. Typically, it's going to be a number of days. So depending on when those days are, we'll be able to design a program around them for, for that. Typically, also, when the delegations become involved or they, sorry, when the missions become involved, then they also generate other activities. So I, I think there's huge opportunity to participate in, in other sessions of the summit, but also then to advance their agenda, including bilateral meetings with the United Nations and other stakeholders while they're in New York. We found last year that delegations who came, they were involved in their respective session or day-long activities, but then typically, I did a little bit of a calculation on this, typically they were engaged on activities for four other days in addition to the day around the program. So it was of immense value. And it's it's a bit like, um, you know, you, you have to have a very op open mind, but certainly participation in, in New York where, where practicable and where possible is, is very, very valuable. And we work with, with those stakeholders to ensure that they have a very comprehensive program while in New York. And of course, once we know more about their session, well then that, that even makes is more so the case. Thank you, Declan. Jessica, eso respondió a tu pregunta o tienes una Jessica, is that clear now or do you have uh, another question? Maybe I'm not sure if Jessica's still there, but Declan, no thank you. No sé si está Jessica. To follow up and certainly we'll let you know as Jessica and her colleagues from the Guatemalan government, sí. as other stakeholders reach out to us, we can make sure to put you in touch, Declan, with groups that may be interested in participating in person. Thank you, Ana. Thank you, Ana. Um, thank you. That was very useful. And also, I would like to ask you the following. When we hold our session, we, what should Senasir do? Should we take a technical team? What does the UN provide besides the translation, as Anna said at, at that point? I think that the Zoom platform is provided by, by, by you as well. Which other technical aspects should we consider or plan uh, uh, in order to organize the session? Thank you. Gracias. Declan, I think that's to you. So again, what for those who are going in person, what do they need to consider? Do they need to, in terms of the setup, is that something that's organized that can be, or we can find ways to help them? What do they need yeah, to know so, so, to in person? Yeah, you know, if, if, if people are planning to organize their session in in New York, and as the as the as the call for uh, uh, session proposals makes clear, then we work on the basis that uh, you bring your own room, as it were. But uh, having having said that, uh, we had a lot of success last year in obtaining meeting rooms in the respective missions uh, of the United Nations member states. So I think that's the, the first consideration is where is your venue going to be? That's the number one. Now, we do have meeting rooms. We do have availability, and we're, we're working to, we're happy to work with you to, to make that a reality. But I think the first step is yours. We have a draft letter, which we provide uh, for, for people to secure a meeting venue in their respective delegation. Then once that's done, I mean, they provide, uh, at least last year, all the meeting rooms in the UN missions came fully 
connected and 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 you know everything you need was was there including typically they provided lunch and they provided a coffee and tea and all the rest of it so in terms of logistics i think that's the primary consideration where's the venue and i've just outlined the first approach and then once that's done of course we work very closely together to ensure that your session is is promoted that it's networked and that it's ventilated fully as part of the program uh, that includes us working with you to identify other speakers i mean ideally again ideally we want to maximize the 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 geographic scope of every session so that would mean working with you with, with to suggest speakers from africa from the global south or whatever and there'll be plenty of opportunities for that so and uh, we will also help on the media side on the visibility side and and also on defining uh, outcomes so uh, again you know the typical uh, support you would find at any uh, conference except this is yeah slightly more challenging but the opportunities are much greater uh, as well so I, I, I hope that answers in, in part your question, but happy to, we're available uh, to answer any other questions and our colleague uh, Pilar will be providing uh, guidelines on how practically to set up. And in case I didn't mention, we provide the Zoom uh, platform and everything needed for you know, registration and all that sort of good stuff for the, for the virtual or hybrid element of the, of the program. Thank you. Thank you, Declan, for clarifying. Uh, and Jessica, we can send an email to put you in touch with Declan and his team. We're happy from the AI to continue to support your participation and help with the planning and logistics and design of the events that, that you would like to put forth from Guatemala. And thank you. Thank you for also being very amable. Gracias. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dorian, for your comment uh, about participating uh, from this other organization. Any other comments or questions? Susana Diana Mauricio. Susana Diana Mauricio. Yes. Um, who can? submit proposals is it civil society institutions can it also be universities for instance i belong to columbia university and we work on um, climate related migration and that's the topic we would like to address it's one of the topics that interests the iai And should we use the same form as Declan said? Is it the same thing? And we should include the, the topic and that the AI is interested in it? That's what comes to mind at this point, for, inst uh, for instance. Yes, that would be great, Susana. Uh, as the AI, we are very happy to work with you. Uh, so it's a great way to collaborate and to, uh, you know, I like this topic, which is so important in the region. It's also a hybrid meeting. We're considering sending an in-person delegation as well, so we can address these logistics issues later on. Yes, as I understand, anyone can submit uh, a session proposal. Thank you, Anna. OK, let's stay in touch. And if you're going to New York representing the IAI, that would be great as well. Thank you. Bueno, si no hay más preguntas, creo que vamos cerrando la sesión de hoy. Great. If there are no further questions, let's close today's session. We have recorded it, so we'll be sharing it with those who were not here today. Thank you so much, Declan, Eric, Matías, and Lourdes, uh, who were supporting the session. And thank you, everyone, today. Hope to see you soon at the Science Summit. We'll stay in touch. We're here to help you with any questions or doubts. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much for this opportunity to promote our Science Summit. The final comment, I, I very much like the, 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 the session titles you're proposing. Uh, I, I think they have huge relevance and I, I just, uh, I'm particularly, I'm particularly uh, interested in the, well, they're all, all excellent, but I, th I think the one on trade is probably um, particularly relevant because of the huge issues surrounding 
the 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 idea that you know we're, we're we still live in a very mercantilist world where we're very familiar with trading bananas and, and cocoa beans and rubber tires yeah but not with knowledge and data and i i think this is uh, this is why the the trade discussion i think will will be so very very much important so happy to to contribute to that and any of, of of the other sessions you're preparing so thank you thank you declan fantastic guidance and again thanks for your insights here well, we'll stay in touch and look forward to continue to work together as the program develops over the next few months. Gracias a todos y todas y que tengan una excelente tarde y noche. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon and nice evening. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Thank you, everyone. Muchas gracias. Nos vemos. Gracias. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Gracias, Matías, Lourdes, Andrea. Gracias, Lourdes. Hasta luego, Ana. Gracias. Gracias. Andrea, después podemos subir el video, ¿no? O partes del video de diseminación y compartir con las redes. Creo que puede ser de interés sí. para los... Sí, sí. Sí, cuando se convierta ya lo, lo, lo subimos. Sí. Perfecto. Bueno. Gracias, Andrea. Gracias, Andrea. Hasta pronto. Chao, chao.